Welcome back to Wake Up America. Let's take a look at today's business headlines. Joining us to do so, Executive Vice President of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano, and also America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. Good morning to you both. Morning, morning. Rachel. All right, let's start with the markets. They begin the day in the green. Dow Jones adding 236 points. NASDAQ jumping 291. S&P 500 gaining 60. Futures are down, however, ahead of today's opening bell. A lot of news and a lot of change in the markets with Twitter's co-founder and chief executive officer Jack Dorsey stepping down. Twitter immediately naming a new CEO. Dan, I'll start with you. What did you make of the Dorsey news? Well, it shouldn't come as that much of a surprise for those that are familiar with Jack Dorsey. I think a lot of people were caught off guard, however, on the outside. Look, you can't argue with he is a very smart businessman, and it appears that he's looking to focus his time more on his other company, Square, and getting more involved with cryptocurrency. I mean, does he need the headaches that Twitter brings to him <laughs> testifying before Congress? So it's probably the right move for him and for Twitter. Do any of us need the headaches Twitter brings? Jennifer, what do you make of that news? <laughs> Yeah, look, Twitter is not growing exponentially like its other tech rivals are. And a lot of the ideas and innovations put in under Jack Dorsey just failed to launch. And now they're putting in um, his key mentor in the CEO role. So I'm looking at this in one of two ways. Either they have a serious case of groupthink and um, really are going to try the same innovations that actually haven't worked, or they're looking to sell and they want to show stability at the top. So it's interesting to watch and to see what will happen with Twitter. While it is very influential, Influential, it is not growing and monetizing the way others have, like Meta, a.k.a. formerly known as Formerly Facebook. known as Facebook. No, interesting point Artists. there. All right, let's talk about the supply chain. The U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's warning that the new variant, Omicron, could slow job growth and intensify supply chain disruptions that are already a major issue. The Federal Trade Commission now seeking information from Amazon, Walmart, and other major companies about how they're actually handling those issues. It's part of a study into whether the problems have led to anti-competitive behavior and higher prices. Jennifer, what do you make of this? Yeah, look, the, the, the new variants of COVID are not are going to disrupt supply chains. What's going to disrupt supply chains is government overreaction and bad public policy in light of new variants. And I think uh, um, that that statement coming out was irresponsible. I think it strikes a lot of fear into people's heart. I think it causes concern for working men and women who were put out of work by bad policies um, during the COVID crisis. And I think you have to really, we have to really think about this is not this strain coming out of South Africa, according to reports, is not killing people. Most cases are mild, according to the South African government. And that we should be more responsible when talking about economic policy and economics in the United States. And so many people who just got their jobs back wondering if that job yeah. is in fact safe. Yeah, a lot of concern, especially heading into the holiday season and the winter months. Let me ask you, Dan, in the past two years, Amazon has added workers at an unprecedented rate to keep up with the pandemic-induced surge in demand for their company. Certainly everyone's swiping just to have everything delivered right at home. Do you think that they're going to continue to hire workers at this pace or won't mellow out? Uh, yeah, I think they're going to. Listen, I think Amazon's dominance basically over everything is far from over. Amazon has the right formula. Remember, we think of them as a retail online company. They're really not. That's part of what they do. They're a data collection company, which means essentially they know what we're thinking. They understand the trends of people that are buying from them. That's a huge advantage that they have in business. So I think they're going to continue to exploit that. And I would anticipate Amazon will continue to grow and they will continue to hire more people. All right, Nissan says it plans to spend $17.6 billion over the next five years as it adds 20 new battery-powered vehicles to its lineup. Jennifer, do you see that cars go fully electric in the next decade? Well, I think the market should decide that and not the government. I mean, uh, the, you know, the Secretary of Transportation in his ludicrous comment about if American families just bought an overpriced electric vehicle that they won't have to worry about gas prices is ludicrous. Pro tip to the Biden administration, by the way, on the electricity used to charge those cars is A, a fossil fuel, and B, you need coal, which you also have been trying to put out of business since the Obama administration. It's just ludicrous. If the marketplace was demanding it, that's great. 
great. The concern is that some of this is in reaction to what could become government regulation and government mandates, and that's very problematic. We became energy independent in 2019. That was thanks to deregulation and the government largely getting out of the way. So I think it's very dangerous to start to go backwards on that and for companies to be responding in that way. All right, we'll end it right there. All the time we have for this morning, Jennifer Stefano, Dan Geltrude, thank you as always. Thanks, Rachel.